All the windows were bombed out of it. You might as well be sleeping outside. A lot of them died. This is Jerry. Did anybody try to escape? Huh? Did anybody try to escape? Oh, yeah. We had one guy who used to escape about once a week. Maybe he wouldn't get any farther than from here to halfway to Midland. He couldn't hardly walk. What did it do when they get, bring him back? Bring him back, throw him in, that's all. They didn't, didn't punish him or anything for it? No, and you know one thing? He had a forty-five on him. And they never searched. He just brought him back. I guess they figured he was nuts and just walking around, you know. He never even searched him. He never pulled on him. And he had a... Uh, American 45, I don't know where he got it. Did anybody ever escape and make it? No, 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 no. Well, you were pretty far away from American troops there? None of them could walk. Christ, well, after about four, three or four weeks, none of them could walk. I guess maybe that's the idea. You yeah, oh, no, sure. You couldn't run away and you couldn't fight if you was too weak. They used to make us work there for, at first, you know, with the waiting cars had been bombed in the yard, you know, and upset their coal cars and busted it. And they'd fix the track up to where the coal was at, maybe, and then they'd get us out there and get us to try to shovel it in them scows. For <laughs> it was flat scows. It wasn't big highlands like we are here. Maybe. Something like the little ones. You've seen them flatter. And didn't have us shoveling in there. Guys, we couldn't shovel enough coal in there to start a fire. You were in that place a month when you got out? I was there. I was there about four weeks. Uh, I'm thinking from December around the... Uh, I wasn't there. I watched for about till New Year's or better. And then we got in there. And I was there about three or four weeks. And I went from there on a train. I was in that thing for a week. 48 car with about that much Oh shit, and ice in it, you know, about a foot of ice and snow. They kept us in that a week. And when we got to uh, Seasburg, that was uh, February 5th, mm -hmm. from December the 23rd to February the 5th, about right? five or six weeks. Of this like, building you used to tell me about where it was about 1,200. Was that that monastery? No, no, that was that factory. They were just packed in there. Right? Mm -hmm on top of one. You get one slice of bread and a cup of soup that was uh, <laughs> like a, I don't know, it was, we made it in a big pot like in a uh, blacksmith shop. You know, like a blacksmith shop. It is, what do they call them? The forge for blacksmith shop. They had the uh, pot setting down in there and the fire built under. And I think it'd hold about Oh, I'd say 30, 40 gallons, maybe 50. They'd put about a pound of, or two of barley flour, I think it was barley flour, in it. Heat it up, you get, a, you get about a cup of that. You get about five or six, eight gallons. So that add it in a slice of bread. And you trade the bread any time for a cigarette. You, know, you couldn't eat it. Well, you went, where'd you go to then? Well, after you left the factory, uh, that we went. That's when we went to Seasburg. What was Seasburg? Was that a regular prison camp? No, it was a big monastery, <coughs> Catholic monastery, and uh, that big hospital in there. It was on the Catholic Church, I guess. They uh, they treat you a little better there. Oh yeah, what we got to eat was clean. wasn't enough, you know. We too damn near starved to death. But what we got was clean, but we never got half enough deep. How long did you stay there? Um, let's see. February, March. I got that way, Dave. We must have stayed there about uh, a month, I mean, about a month or so of yet. Um, I can't remember the date we left there. I remember the date we got there. Did you get liberated from there? Uh, we got liberated from uh, this place that uh, was supposed to be a camp. It was a camp. It wasn't a prison camp. It was, I mean, they never, uh, they never had no fences or anything around it. How long were you in that place? That you About were? a month. Uh, you went from the monastery and then you stayed a month in that place? Yeah. How long was you captured altogether? By 
a little better than three months. That's all. From December the 23rd to uh, April the 8th, I got back to uh, uh, Paris. Was that the end of the month? Oh, April. I got liberated April the 8th. I got back to Paris April the 12th, the day Roosevelt died. Did, um, when you got liberated, was that the end of the war? No. No. Yeah. The, war hadn't, the war hadn't ended yet? Oh, no. The war didn't end until... When the war in Europe end? BJ Day. I'm not sure. So I... Well, how, do you, just, how do you come to be liberated? The Americans over around the place? Yeah. The, that Italian forced labor. That's what that was. That was a forced labor camp more than a prison camp. They had Italians and Russians there, you know. They, uh, was that a pretty bad place? It wasn't. It was better than the first one. But it wasn't as good as... Uh, the well, it was about the, about the, with the privileges you had, it was like the barter and that. Did they treat you the same as they did the Italians and the Russians? Did no, you? no. Uh-uh. They, were they pretty hard on them? Yeah, they were full slave, but they were they were in service. There was whole families of them there. Whole families. Well, they had to work right. in working in factories and doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, I think where that uh, the way them Italians talk to me, they they got gun emplacements. I guess for heavy artillery or something mm -hmm. or any aircraft, you know. And they used to. We was there all oh, we could. Uh, we, we well, some boy got shot down in a bomber. And he, he came in, he laid him down right beside me. He was from Beaver Falls. And he, uh, he came in there and his back was hurt. Well, he was the only one that got out of the bomber. And uh, his back was hurt, hurt bad. He couldn't move hardly. And you see, the Germans interrogating him, you know. He couldn't get nothing out of him. Little Italian fellow. He only but I don't see the way I need 10 or 25. He was a tail gunner. And he bombed and uh, he, uh, they interrogated him, you know, and finally some German colonel come in and said, uh, started talking to him. He said, uh, how many men is on that bomb? He said to him, he said, when do I get some medical care? He said, you son of a bitch, you don't think you're going to get answers out of me? He said, when you don't even send a doctor here to look at me. So I've been here and can't move. And uh, this old German colonel, you know, he had a big lid tied on. He flipped the lid off it, you know. And he said, well, it doesn't matter with his mentality or anything. You know, he knew what was going on. He said, go ahead and shoot you, son of a bitch. You couldn't do it any quicker the way you're doing it now. He said, it won't be a damn bit quicker the way you're doing it. And he said, oh, and the face, and out he went. <laughs> He wouldn't, he wouldn't talk to him at all. He said, you give me medical care, he said, and I might answer a question for you. I don't mean to tell you anything, he said, but I don't even want to answer questions for you now. How much did you weigh when you finally got liberated? 83 pounds. Jesus Christ. Did that cause any kind of permanent damage? I mean, your arteries in your leg, was that from That's that? But I, that I know of. My feet were froze, my legs froze some. Hey, you sat on a cake of ice for a week, you thought you were going to be froze. You lost one of your toes, didn't you, froze? Yeah, I lost one. It froze. That's true. What did they do? They just came up with and cut it off, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah, cut it with the uh, bandage shear. Some Russian guy. He said he was a doctor. I think he is. I think he was just a Bolshevik. <laughs> cut that off and tried. Uh, it was sore. The cutting it off didn't hurt it. It hurt as much when he tried the damn thing in the joint. It was rotten him right around the first joint, you know. And he just flipped it off. And he just got I called him everything in the book. <laughs> and the guy there with me, I forget what he was. He was in there for examination. He said to, said to me, hey, Red, he said, what's your language? He said, some of these nuns in that, they can speak a dozen languages. Huh? He said, they don't know what you're saying. I said, I hope that Christ somebody knows what I'm saying. Never put a thing on it, you know, like the clear comb or anything. Well, it didn't bleed to my painting, but it was sore, just like a ball, you know, you touch it, the touching shoe, it sore, festered. 
we here, well, we got a little better one by his sword, but hell, I was back. Hell, I was back here and on furlough when it wasn't healed yet. It was still healed. Did uh, the guy that was real sick, did they get any medical attention? Well, uh, I don't know what they got. I know one guy over there, he, uh, he had, uh, he was real bad. He shot across the back with a, a bullet, you know, and didn't, it didn't uh, go in. in. Just burn him right across the, um, uh, six or eight inches, right down across the big part of his back, and just burn the crease across there. And he got all infected, twice as far as you could see to his pants, it was all a mass of sore and, and running, you know. They took him out. They, they brought him back all right. But he gave me a letter to mail and said to me, he says, uh, I go to if you get back, if I don't get back that, he said, you get back, he said, mail this letter. I said, them son of a bitches ain't sending our mail. I said, I know they ain't, or we'd have heard from them. And uh, he said, well, I might not, he said, I might not get back. I said, you'll get back all right. I said, the way you smell, I said, the devil won't have you. And he did come back. He was gone, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks, maybe. And then he came back, and he... And stop the infection, you know. But he was still sore as hell. Strong. Strong is his name.